Good evening and welcome to evening prayer on this Thursday, the 24th of September. As we come together, let us reflect on the day that has been and give thanks to God where thanks is needed and ask for his blessing where it is needed. So let us pray. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. There shall come forth a shoot from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. He shall not, decide by, uh, shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf, the lion, and the fatling together, with a little child to lead them. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray of one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. Our first psalm for this evening is Psalm 39. Lord, let me know my end and the number of my days. I said I will keep watch over my ways so that I will not offend with my tongue. I will guard my mouth with a muzzle, while the wicked are in my sight. So I held my tongue and said nothing. I kept silent but to no avail. My distress increased. My heart grew hot within me. Whilst I mused, the fire was kindled, and I spoke out with my tongue. Lord, let me know my end and the number of my days, that I may know how short my time is. You have made my days but a hand's breadth, and my lifetime is an, as nothing in your sight. Truly, even those who stand upright are but a breath. We walk about like a shadow, and in vain we are in turmoil. We heap up riches and cannot tell who will gather them. And now, what is my hope? Truly, my hope is even in you. Deliver me from my transgressions, and do not make me the taunt of the fool. I fell silent and did not open my mouth, for surely it was your doing. Take away your plague from me. I am consumed by the blows of your hand. With rebukes will sin, for sin you will punish us. Like a moth you will consume our beauty. Truly everyone is but a breath. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears, for I am but a stranger with you a wayfarer as all my forebears were. Turn your gaze from me that I might be glad again, before I go my way and am no more. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, let me know my end, and the number of my days. Our second psalm for this morning is Psalm 40. Great are the wonders you have done, O Lord my God. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me, to me and heard my cry. He brought me out of the roaring pit, out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon a rock and made, me, made my footing sure. He has put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise in, in, to our God. Many shall see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not turn to the proud that follow a lie. Great are the wonders you have done. O Lord my God, how great your design for us. There is none that can compare with you. If I were to proclaim them and tell of them, they would be more than I am able to express. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but my ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sacrifice for sin you have not required, then I said, Lo, I come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me, that I should do your will, O my God. I delight to do it. 
Your law is within my heart. I have declared your righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I did not restrain my lips, and that, O Lord, you know. Your righteousness I have not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithful and uh, your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and truth from the great congregation. Do not withhold your compassion from me, O Lord. Let your love and your faithfulness always preserve me. For innumerable troubles have come about me. My sins have overtaken me so that I cannot look up. They are more in number than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and altogether dismayed, who seek after my life to destroy it. Let them be driven back and be put to shame, who wish me evil. Let those who heap insult upon me be desolate because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice in you and be glad. Let those who love your salvation always say, The Lord is great. Though I am poor and needy, the Lord cares for me. You are my helper and my deliverer. O oh my God, make no delay. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Great are the wonders you have done, O Lord my God. Our Old Testament reading for this evening is a continuation of the Book of Wisdom, chapter 8, verses 5 to 18. If riches are as desirable possession in life, what is richer than wisdom, the active cause of all things? And if understanding is effective, how much more, who more than she is favourable of what exists? And if, she, if anyone loves righteousness, <clears throat> her labours are virtues, for she teaches self-control and prudence, justice and courage. Nothing in life in, uh, is more profitable for mortals than these. And if anyone longs for a wide experience, she knows the things of old and infers the things to come. She understands turns of speech and the solution of riddles. She has foreknowledge of signs and wonders and of the outcome of seasons and times. Therefore, I determined to take her to live with me, knowing that she would give me good counsel and encouragement in cares and grief. Because of her, I shall have glory among the multitudes and honour in the presence of the elders, though I am young. I shall be found keen in judgment, and in the sight of rulers I shall be admired. <coughs> when I am silent, they will, be, they will wait for me, and when I speak, they will give heed. If I speak at greater length, they will put their hands on their mouths because of her. I shall have immortality, and leave an everlasting remembrance to those who come after me. I shall govern people and nations will be subject to me. Dread monarchs will be afraid of me when they, when they hear of me. Among the people I shall show myself capable and courageous in war. When I enter my house I shall find rest with her, for companionship with her has no bitterness, and life with her has no pain but gladness and joy. When I consider these things inwardly and ponder in my heart, that in kins, a kinship with wisdom there is immortality, and in friendship with her pure delight, and the labours of her hands unfailing wealth, and in the experience of her company understanding, and renown in sharing her words, I went about seeking how to get her for myself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and shall share in the feast of your kingdom. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord? For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Our New Testament read is a continuation of Mark's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 1 to 12. Then he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard, put a fence round it, dug a pit for the winepress, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. 
When the season came, he sent a slave to the tenants to collect from them his share of the produce of the vineyard. But they seized him and beat him and sent him away empty-handed. And again, he sent another slave to them. This one they beat over the head and insulted. Then he sent another, and that one they killed. And so it was with many others. Some they beat and others they killed. He had still one other, a beloved son. Finally he sent him to them, saying, They will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they seized him, killed him, and threw him out of the vineyard. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read this scripture? The stone that the builder rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it was amazing in our eyes. When they realized that they had told this parable against them, they wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowd, so they left him and went away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. You have filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the day that has been. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for your guidance. We pray for all who we have dealt with this day. We give thanks for those who have been kind to us. We pray for those who have not. We pray for those who we have not treated as well as we should. We ask for your forgiveness for those times when we have not acted in the way that your son would. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those being affected by the coronavirus. For those who are in self-isolation, for those who are in quarantine, for those who are shielding, for those who are in hospital, and for those who have died. We pray particularly for our schools, we pray for the staff and the, for the pupils. Lord, we ask that you keep them safe. Help them to grow in their knowledge, in their understanding, and in their, their recognition of you. We pray for all those children who have been unable to return to school. For those who are struggling, and for those who are filled with anxiety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our emergency services, for the police, the ambulance, fire and rescue, for all those who are putting themselves in harm's way to help others. We pray for those who are being asked to enforce COVID rules. We pray for those who are unable to see their families to allow themselves to keep working. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for those who are working in the hospitality industry. We pray for those who are working in our local pubs and bars, for those who are working in restaurants, for those who are worried about their livelihoods and their industry. We pray for those who are feeling unable to go out and for those who are feeling isolated. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for your people throughout the world. We pray for all places where Christians are oppressed because of their faith. We pray for those places where Christianity is is persecuted. We pray for all who are persecuted for their faith. We pray for a day when there is tolerance of all, where all are treated equally regardless of their ethnicity, their faith, their gender or their sexuality. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of stillness, we offer to God the thoughts and prayers of our innermost heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in love and active in service, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please do join me tomorrow at 9 a.m. and at 5 p.m. for morning and evening prayer. Um, and just a reminder, this Sunday we will have an 8 o'clock BCP Holy Communion at St. Mary's. There will be a 9.30 Eucharist at St. Mary's. This will be streamed onto Facebook and onto YouTube. And at 11 o'clock, we will be at St. Thomas's for their Eucharist. So please do join if you can physically. And if you can't, please do join us online. Uh, it is lovely having as many of you who are able to worship with us. And also that the uh, track and trace is now going up and running. And we will have these in the church. So if you are using the app, you can scan that to keep a log of where you've been. Um, but we'll also have the paper copy um, for those who wish to leave their name instead. Until you see each other again, God bless, stay safe and have a very good evening.